everybody. Hey guys. I hope Hi. you're doing well. <laughs> Um, this is Tom and Jen Atwater. We're here in Medellin, Colombia, doing our nightly prayer call for America. It's 9-11 Prayer Project for America. Every night we have somebody else from around the world joining us. And tonight we are so honored to have Dr. John Peterson, an emergency doctor from Martinsville, Virginia. Hey, John, how you doing? Well, great. It's uh, I thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be on this call and uh, to pray with you guys um, because there is uh, power in agreement, right? Amen. Where two or more are gathered, um, and we've got three. So yeah, here we go. yeah we got at least three. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Uh, yeah, we're good. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I thought maybe, Tom, do you want to just explain a little bit what we were just talking about before we went on? Live? Yeah, just before doing the live thing, we're just uh, talking a little bit and remind me of conversations I've been having with people and, and pastors in the United States where uh, now churches are opening again. And uh, in, in some churches, they're opening like, uh, but with, with masks and the biosecurity standards, hey, we'll open, but let's let's do some social distancing in the mask. And so they have, a, they have groups in the in the church so groups of the congregants are like some of them are like hey um yeah why are we even wearing masks at church why are we social this is this is completely dumb we need to uh we need to have faith Freedom. and just uh, just come on in here and fill this church up and then there's there are other groups in like these same churches that are saying uh hey why are you guys even meeting we can't even meet at church this is even with the biosecurity standards, that where you guys aren't being safe enough, and they're and they're like this inside so, the Christian it, church. Inside, yeah. the people, they're like one, and they're and uh, criticizing the pastor. Whatever decision the pastor does, he's going to be criticized. All. all this is happening while an army is coming to take the church down. I don't know if you've heard, but the the army's uh, the army is a, is a it's called Antifa. It's called uh, the military part of Black Lives Matter, and and they're coming to burn the churches. They're coming to tear take their away, statues down, take away the freedoms, take away the freedoms, and yeah. take away the rights. And so we're the, the Christians are like this, and these other groups are are just like really happy uh, because they, they, they can, can just sit and watch us destroy ourselves. They, they <laughs> can sit and watch us destroy ourselves, and that yeah. is what's happening basically in the United States, but in a microcosm in our own churches. In the three things that are coming against the church. You think, now, this is a, it's a war strategy. It's uh, um, fear, confusion, and division. Yeah. Now, the same yeah. strategies God has used against the armies that have come against Israel in the past, uh, in Chronicles, uh, he, he, he let armies uh, be divided in fear and confusion, and they would destroy themselves. Right. It's, a, it's a war strategy. But now this war strategy is, is being used by the enemy against the church and against a nation that has been a sanctuary for the Christian church for, for 200 years and a sanctuary for the Christian church around the world. And I believe what's happening is to uh, to topple not only a government, but a government that, that is a sanctuary for Christians and the Christian church. And so, uh, so this has been on our hearts. And those three top things fear, confusion, and division have, uh, is like, it's they're, they're still the there. Yeah. And hate is all around that stuff. But um, but what we really need is is godly love that works in forgiveness yeah. and understanding and uh, seeing things from a rational point of view. Uh, and um, uh, uh, Dominio propio, and that's Spanish. Self-control. Self -control, thank you. And so self-control is like, instead of confusion, we need that that self-control of the mind, the mind of Christ clarity, yeah. and clarity of mind. And instead of just going off and just whatever or, or believing whatever people tell us is this the self-control that, that's yeah. the firmly and rooted in love and in God and, and then see, also and, unity. And, yeah. and, and not to be swayed by like sometimes like a post of what on Facebook that sometimes may not be accurate or may be accurate, but, but really emotionally charged. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we all see people swinging, you know, from one pendulum to the other, creating hate and division and, and disunity within the church. You know, a, a friend of mine said something uh, <clears throat> just before the beginning of this whole pandemic thing <clears throat> that uh, has really been kind of a, a yardstick that I that has helped me look at what's going on. And <clears throat> 
He said, God is, it's very simple. God is love. Jesus is the perfect representation of God in human form. And if something's going on and it's not done in love, it's not God. Yeah. So, you know, we all need to keep that in mind. You know, if it's fear, it's not God. It's perfect love casts out fear. You know, if it's Margaret. division in the church, it's not love. God's not there. He's not in that. Even though it's in the so church. We, we, we need to keep coming back and, and measuring what's going on by the standard of love, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I, I love it. And then the, uh, we seem to personalize this and take these ideologies or whatever. Let's say it's just Marxism and personalize it against, uh, uh, I don't know, leaders of, of these organizations. And, and uh, in uh, what I'm saying, I guess uh, get highly offended uh, by someone and their their opinions. Now I I, I know uh, very leftist people, and I love them. They're beautiful people, and they're, I know people from the other. So it, it, and it's not like uh, we we may disagree with these these ideologies. Uh, and we need to stand up for what is right and what is true. It's time to stand but, up. But it's and it's time to stand up. But it's 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 not out of hate or, or fear or offense. It, it, it's out of out of love and um, a love for for Lord, love for the truth. And so, the best thing that we can do is not argue, <laughs> not try to sway somebody's opinion. The best thing we can do is come before God in humility and repent. Yeah. And ask for him to forgive us and not ask for him to, hey, Lord, you need to deal with those Change radical that. people out there who are like burning our cities. Lord, you need to deal with me and mm. what's in my heart and what's in my church. And and body us as a people of body of Christ, of, of believers, we need to first analyze our own hearts and how have we contributed yeah. to all of this stuff and uh, and first uh, bring repentance in the house of the Lord. Because so, because if, if we can't get it together to be a positive part of the change, who can? If the church right. can't can't be that, and but I but I I personally am watching the news um so much. I feel like it. I'm encouraged because I do see strong influential strong leaders standing up now and not being as afraid. Because you know there was a period there where, I mean, if you said anything against you know. The, the real leftist, the Marxist movement, you, you know, you could get vilified. And, uh, and I, I see that changing. So, but I, I feel like it's also time to in, speak the truth in love right. um, and, and repent for things like um, allowing abortion. Ooh, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a fighting word for a lot of people, but repent for allowing, allowing, being passive enough to allow abortion to be legal and to be practiced so widely in and racism and, and all those things. So that's kind of part of what, what we're doing yeah. too. So and, let's. And so, yeah, so this call is just whatever is on your heart, Dr. John, and, uh, whatever Holy Spirit is telling you. I know you're a, you're a man of prayer, a man of intercession, a man when you, when you pray, things happen. A man who's been refined by the fire. Yeah. Come out shining and strong. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're we'll just hand it over to you, and um, and we'll be and, right here. We'll be right here, and just awesome. uh, lead us in prayer. Uh, well, th well, thank you uh, for this opportunity. It's always great to see you guys, but uh, even more to pray with you guys. So, yeah. Holy Spirit, we just invite your presence into this call, and uh, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hmm. Father, we can't do anything without you, but with you, nothing's impossible. When we look at the world as it is today with all the conflict and the, and the strife, and you are our only hope. Mm -hmm. And I just pray, Lord, that we and all of your people who are called by your name would humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. And we have the assurance of your word, Lord, that you will hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. 
So, Lord, we just, um, I repent, Lord, not only for uh, this country, but specifically for myself, um, how easy it is to um, vilify people who don't agree when it's really, we're warring against principalities and powers. This is a spiritual war here, far beyond any kind of disagreement we have with each other. And um, you, are call, you are calling us to step out in love and in truth, Lord. And I confess, I haven't always done that. I haven't always stepped out in love. And, I haven't always spoken the truth when um, it's probably better that I don't speak it if it's not in love, actually. So um, excuse me a minute. <clears throat> Sorry. You're good. Okay. So um, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Lord, uh, help us. Help us trust in you uh, with all of our hearts. Help us not lean on our own understanding uh, through this time, but to know that you are a loving God. Uh, and your word says, and you have demonstrated time and time again that you cause all things to work together for good for those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. And this is a time, Lord, when we need, um, as never before, perhaps in the history of this country, to, to have faith that you are um, a loving and merciful father and you um, have a plan and a purpose, and where the enemy is playing checkers, you are playing chess. Oh, God, yes. You, Lord, have um, have this under control. You're not surprised by this uh, this chain of events that's going on, and um, you will work it out for your glory. And that is our ultimate goal, Lord, that you be glorified in this situation and in the world and that you use us Amen. to partner with you to bring heaven to earth. And we see sometimes that this is such, uh, uh, it almost looks like hell's coming to earth sometimes. Yeah. But, but Lord, um, you have a people, a chosen people, and Lord, we have not represented you well so, so much of the time, but now is the time we need to rise up. We need to uh, wake up. The church has been asleep, Lord, in this country. People have, uh, we have as a people uh, sought your hand, but not your face. And I repent for that, Lord, for this nation. We need to seek your face, Lord. We need to uh, hear your voice. We need to be quick to hear it, quick to heed it, and quick to obey it. Because we were created for such a time as this to, to, to see you move and to partner with you to move in a way that perhaps is, is the greatest since the first century church. You are pouring out your spirit, Lord, and, and we've seen it around the world. You are pouring out your spirit. Um, and uh, people who uh, need you so desperately are seeing you through signs and wonders and personal visitation, through dreams and visions. and this is a time when 
uh, the wheat is being separated from the chaff. Mm. And it is time for God's people to turn to you as never before. Yeah. And um, I just pray, Lord, that, that your church would wake up. Yeah. yeah. Submit. Um, trust in faith and and we will be recognized by the love that we have one for another wow yeah. and that is what we all need to remember that it's the love we have one for another that people will see that there's something different about us that and lord we we so need to walk closer to you than ever before we need to to uh, to be so in tune with you that we represent you with honor in this dark world we're in right now. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a merciful God, that you cause all things to work together for good for those who love you, that your mercy is new every morning that you bring peace that surpasses understanding, that we need not be anxious, but in all things by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we can present our request to you and the peace of God that passes understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I just declare and decree the peace of God over God's people today, that we would keep our eyes fixed on him. We would not look to the right or the left. We would not be distracted by the noise in the airwaves and, and the noise all around us. But we would, as never before, walk out in faith and trust in our God who, um, with whom nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. He's still I, I, in control. Yeah. I feel uh, that there's just a, a heavenly peace that's going out. I know almost everybody who's listening right now is feeling like an atmosphere. It's just changing where you're at. And so I'm going to invite everybody peace. just to close your eyes and just put out your hands like this. I'm going to ask you, Dr. John, to pray again just that that peace would come on everybody who's here because it, it, it changed the atmosphere where we are right now. And I'm yeah. sure many, many all, everybody's listening has just changed. So go just one more time. And everybody here is listening to my voice. Just close your eyes and just receive this peace because this is real and this is tangible. Holy Spirit, increase your presence among us. I just pray. Lord, for a baptism of peace for each one listening to this broadcast, Lord. Yeah. That's good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's good. I receive that. Yeah. And we cancel fear in Jesus' name. We cancel all fear, fear of sickness, fear of economic problems, fear of the future, fear of violence. Uh, fear of just the fear of the uncertainty of fear of the boredom fear of the, the the virus and the quarantine and everything we just cancel fear in Jesus name and we declare and speak hope into your hearts in Jesus name God is in control God is on the throne we cancel fear and we speak hope in Jesus name and we speak love because perfect love casts out fear yeah, there is just a tangible change, right? and we just a realignment in in the minds and, and hearts of those listening, the souls of those listening. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Well, Amen. thank you so much, uh, John and Megan. I don't know if Megan's around, but you guys are such dear friends of ours, and and thank you for taking the time. I know it's late there, and um, we just love you so 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 much. Oh, we love you guys too. It's been uh, so uh, amazing to get to know you guys and looking forward to many, many years of fellowship and love. Yeah. yeah. Love you guys. Thank you. Bless, Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Just stay on, John. Bye, everybody. Bless you guys. Bye. Have a good night.